Uhuru, comrades. Is this the best place? Is this good? Is this good, comrade? Yeah. All right. All right. First of all, we want to say uh, giving honor to fighting for freedom, which is the head of my life. <laughs> and uh, in recognition of my leadership, Chairman Amala Yishtatella, who is my personal Black Power Blueprint. Uh, also recognizing my leadership, DC owner, and this tremendous steering committee uh, of the Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace, and Reparations. Uh, here today to talk briefly about uh, the importance of registering to vote and how that connects with uh, uh, the jury pool, like being selected to a jury. Uh, the reality is, though, I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking just about the the registering to vote part. It's, it's you know, it's pretty rudimentary. I want to spend uh, several minutes of the time that I have to talk about how to stay on the jury if you should uh, have the opportunity to get in the pool. Um, and, and I do want to say this. Uh, I, I do dedicate this portion of my discussion to Orenthal Jane Simpson. Yeah, Simpson. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah he, had a, he had a pretty good jury. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that's important to recognize is that there's a difference in how uh, people get into the jury pool when it comes to federal juries and uh, state court juries. So keep that in mind. If the hope people are taking notes, just you know, keep this in mind. So uh, for federal juries, all of those jury pools are selected based on primarily based on voter registrations. And each district court uh, is responsible, each, each uh, jurisdiction, each district court jurisdiction is responsible for making sure that uh, they have this written plan about how they pull people from the various counties in that district court jurisdiction uh, in some fair, impartial, and random way into the jury. So, uh, but it's not just based on uh, uh, voter registration is also based on active voting. So it's not just enough to register to vote. Um, actively voting is also an integral part of uh, making sure you get your name thrown in that random hat. And I'll, I'll tell you why I keep doing this in a minute when I say this, uh, this random selection thing. Uh, so that's the federal courts. But also uh, what happens when federal courts uh, do not have what they consider enough of a selection from the registered voters or even active voters. They will pull from taxpayers' uh, uh, information and also people who have registered with driver's licenses and uh, 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 identifications through that particular uh, state or jurisdiction. Um, uh, as far as states are concerned, a lot of states pattern federal courts with that. And so they'll pull from voter registrations as well as driver, people who have driver's licenses and state IDs. Uh, but it's, I guess it's important to say that there are only two states, I think it's uh, Ohio and another, I can't remember right now, I think it's Wyoming, oh, Wyoming and Ohio, Some, if somebody can fact check that. But I know Ohio for sure, but it's only two that only use voter registration, right? Uh, but if you want to, uh, uh, make sure that you're in the in the in the hat. Then register to vote, vote, and uh, you know have an ID and pay some taxes. And I tell you, out of all of those things, the least painful is uh, just registering to vote. All you got to do is go online and click something, and you can you know you get your registration to vote done. Um, if you want to know how to find out. So each state and, you know, as far as the districts and federal court, all of them have the responsibility to have a written program to uh, that outlines the rules of how they select their, their jury, uh, the jury pool. 
So uh, in Florida, they have this thing called the Office of State Court Administrators. I'm not sure exactly what it is in your particular state, wherever you are watching, but you, you should be able to go online and just look it up. Just Google it and find out uh, what it is. If you want to know those rules to make sure that you are in the hat, uh, go ahead and look it up, see who's responsible for that. But every jurisdiction is responsible for having written rules so that you know how to make sure that you're in the jury pool. Um, the thing I want to say, though, I, I, I don't know if there are any questions about that at all. There are, you know, we, we, we should talk about them relatively immediately, but it, it's pretty, uh, you know, straightforward as far as registering. But the thing is, as far as I'm concerned, to stay on the jury. And earlier, I, I've been throwing up these air quotes because I, I think that this idea of random jury polls is kind of mythical. I'm 49 years old. I've been registered to vote since I was 18 years old. I've been living in the same house for 28 years, paying taxes, and uh, been uh, been driving since I was 16 years old. Haven't been haven't had a jury summons yet, not one, not one, not one. And uh, uh, then, then they told me if I got the uh, carry uh, the, the license to conceal carry, I, I might get selected then. Not one summons yet. So um, I think they know if you're a revolutionary, uh, they don't want you in the jury. Uh, so I just you know, want to uh, make sure that uh, I don't look like I'm co-signing this idea of this random selection. But if you're fortunate enough to get a jury summons, you should go. Um, and I'll tell you why. I was a defendant in 2014. Uh, uh, looking at seven years in prison. And one of the brightest moments, except for the not guilty, uh, uh, aside from the not guilty verdict, was seeing some Africans on the jury. And uh, 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 there was this one, as a matter of fact, and I, 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 don't, I won't say his name, but uh, I'm told that it was the one African on the jury who was the one who made sure that I did not go to prison. And so I want to talk a little bit about how to stay on the jury. And I'll open that up with an African proverb that says, everything we put on the head, we don't put on the tongue. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Everything we put on the head, we don't put on the tongue. And by no means am I uh, trying to persuade anybody to be less than candid with the court. <laughs> Uh, during the four diet. So anybody ever been to jury selection? Okay, all right. So, you know, there's this whole thing called the veneer. So it's a bunch of you. And, and I, I don't know about this random thing because it seems like uh, it's in Florida. I can talk about Florida pretty expertly. So in Florida, you know, you have about a 30-person panel to pick six people in an alternate for a jury. Oftentimes, you're not going to get beyond number 20, Right. Oftentimes you won't get it. You have preemptory challenges and you have challenges for cause. And so you can, you know, and I'm, I'm talking state court right now, not federal court, state court. And you can kind of, you know, attorneys on either side can say who they don't want on the panel for cause. Uh, you know, you have cause challenges, preemptory challenges or, uh, 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 yeah, you know, cause challenges are almost infinite. Preemptory challenges, you have, you know, six in Florida. And, but you never really get to 20, 25 but all the Africans seem to be in the back of that bus. They all, all the Africans have the high numbers, you know. So you hardly ever get to yeah. the the Africans, right? So I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's how random that is, uh, you know. And uh, it's it's just an observation. I'm not saying anything, uh, you know. Uh, this observation is all we always have the back of the bus numbers. But if you happen to be in the veneer. Um, no matter what number you have, and uh, what generally happens is the judge gets to ask questions, then the state asks questions, and I'm talking criminal cases, uh, I'm, I'm sure, and I've never really impaneled a, a, a civil jury, but so I'm talking criminal, it might work the same way with a civil jury, but um, the, the judge goes first, then the state who is the plaintiff in a criminal case goes you know, after the judge, and then the defendant goes next, you know, just try to interview people to get that fair and impartial jury, right? And so um, the judge will ask questions, the state will ask questions, and the defense will ask questions. And a lot of times we have these really zealous, energetic, um, well-meaning Africans 
who, when asked the question, will tell the judge, uh, the, 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 the state attorney, and the defense attorney sometimes exactly how they feel about what's going on. <laughs> and, uh, you know, while I'm not saying that you don't have to, you should not be truthful. I'm, I'm just saying everything we put on the head, we don't have to put on the tongue. So in other words, for example, uh, you know, we believe, you know, I'm a member of the African People's Socialist Party. We believe every African in prison is a political prisoner and all Africans should be free, but that's not necessarily the answer <laughs> that uh, we want to provide for the judge. You know, we need to uh, 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 finesse, finesse, yeah. You know, we gotta, Finesse in order to stay on the on the on the panel. And, and, and that's the thing that I see over and over and over again. Like, no, he ain't do it. I don't care what they say. I don't care how much evidence they got. He ain't do it. <laughs> no. Um, and that's a surefire way to get you cause challenged off the jury. Uh, but you want to be there because we want that kind of fair and impartial jury that the cops who beat up Rodney King had. You know, we 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 want to be a part of that fair and impartial jury, right? Yeah, we want that fair and impartial jury that uh, gets to say that, um, you know, uh, who is guilty and who is not, but you got to know what to say and what not to say in order to stay. Um, I think the last thing that I would say is that it's, it's, it's really important that we understand how, how critical it is to show up. A lot of us just don't show up to the jury thing, you know, and try to get out. But like, like I said earlier, when, when I was in the uh on the at the defense table as a defendant, you know, it was I, I felt like I had a chance mm -hmm. when I saw somebody who looked like you know, they say a jury of your peers. I saw one of my peers. I feel like we had some hope. So don't look at it as a burden. It's not a serious burden. You can just go click, register, vote, do that. And vote, man, just, just vote. So you can vote all kinds of ways these days, as uh, Timberinga and Cam just explained. You can vote all kinds of ways, but do it. But when you get there, everything that's on your head, and I know it's sometimes tough, especially if your Black Power Blueprint is the chairman, uh, not to say everything that's on your head, it's important to, um, to, to my new, oh, the other thing I want to say is another thing that the chairman taught me and the party taught me uh, is that we have to be everywhere. That's the thing I want to say. We have to be everywhere. And that includes the jury pool, the jury panel. We have to be everywhere as revolutionaries, as people who want to see us free. So get there when they ask you questions, just think about to what end. Mm -hmm. That's what we always looking at. To what end? Mm -hmm. My answer, if they ask you a question that evokes uh, some revolutionary uh, remark, to what end? You know, um, you might want uh, what, to, what, somebody said finesse. Yeah, yeah. you might want to finesse what you say so you can be there. And it's so important that we do that. I, I've seen so many of us who should have, would have been good jerks. Everybody would have been not guilty right. if they would have been able to stay, right? right? But, um, you know, we sometimes talk ourselves out of being on the panel and we don't want to do that. Um, yeah, so that's really all I had. I just really wanted to push forward this idea that we have to know what to say and what not to say in order to stay. All right. Um, and, and yeah, register to vote, but not just register, also actively vote. It's not just enough to register, also um, actually vote. All right, comrades. Okuru, uh, sister, you can't get, I just want to check with you a moment because I know that Brother Life has, he doesn't have much longer to stay. And I know that we have a Q&A coming up after the next panel, but I just didn't know if maybe, I don't know what Brother Life's time is right now, if there's time to maybe ask him a couple of questions now. So I just wanted to get your input, your advisement on that. Uhuru, thank you. Yeah, it, we'll take a few questions and we want to move to the next panel just for the sake of time and we'll do Q&A for all of these panels after uh, the next panel. I want to be mindful of um, those that are not in the room that are participating online. Uhuru. Uhuru, does anybody have any questions for Brother Life before he 
um, has to leave Uhuru. Uhuru, brother, I just really want to appreciate that presentation. And I just, you know, we got a trial coming up on September 30th. And can you just speak a little bit about what you think the juror pool is going to do for the prosecution to end up in the defense, you know, for Uhuru to leave? So, uh, had any experience with selecting a panel for a federal court? What I do know is they select from various counties in the district. So this this case is in the Florida Middle District. So you'll have you know Hillsboro, Pasco, Pinellas, Polk, um, uh, Hernando. You know, you'll, so it's it's from these counties that they'll draw these this jury pool um, and. Uh, Again, I, I don't have any faith in how random it is. I, I think they, you know, and, and, yeah, as much as I hate to say it, you know, uh, in, the, in the spirit of the strength of backing of Charles Barron, I'll say, you know, I don't think they do it right. I just think they just, I think they really pick who gets the high numbers. I think they pick who don't get to go to the jury. I've never had a jury summons. How is that possible, right? But, and so I don't know how random it'll be, but I do know they select from the counties in that particular district. Uh, I have a question for you and a comment. Sure. Um, a question across any kind of statistics as it relates to the exclusion of Black people on juries nationwide. I have the comrade. I mean, I've asked that question, but and not just as verbally, but also doing research, and that information is just not there. So that's why I say when I when I say I, I don't think it's random. I, just by happenstance that all the Africans always have the high numbers, right. you know, and we we never can get to you know it's rare that we can get to the Africans. Mm -hmm. Like I, I say, I think so because this I have not come across any evidence that helps me you know uh, say so uh, with any factual standing, but. It, it happens. I've, I've been on. I've been panel six juries in the past two years, and we always have the high numbers. And I've asked over and over again, but just cannot get an answer. And haven't seen anything like that. Um, you know, in my research. And you, you may mention you're about forty something years old. And never been in uh, call for jury duty. Right. That's correct. Okay. I'm seventy seven. I've been called one time. I call myself making sure I, I don't say the wrong things, but they kick me out anyway. <laughs> yeah. And then one last comment, though, uh, for those who leave early. Uh, I pray that we all have a gathering in Tampa in terms of support for the right. Uro 3. I know people have to leave early. I hope I have to see all of you there uh, at the time of the trial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to uh, appreciate the presentation and responding to comments. I keep rooted. <clears throat> the trial is already happening, mm -hmm. wow. and the jury has been seated. <laughs> so uh, the thing is that we just have to really keep doing this work. The appeal still can be works. Uh, and this thing can be beat before we go to trial. So what I'm saying is that we are, we're in trial right now. Yeah. And that what we've been doing over the last day or more uh, is providing the evidence of innocence uh, of what they have charged us with. Mm -hmm. And we're introducing stuff that the trial... Were well, you innocent uh, now? The yeah. trial is over. The trial, <laughs> what we're doing is um, the trial will... The court will do what it can. That is to say, the prosecution will do what it can. <laughs> Uh, to prevent certain testimony and certain evidence from entering into the discussion. Mm -hmm. They will try to limit the discussion just based on the relationship between the Russians. And that that means that we don't have a relationship to history otherwise. The struggles that Mikasa was talking about, the struggles I've been involved in, the struggles we've been involved in as Black people, the history of always fighting and always being opposed. They, they've shown, uh, there's an article recently, I think, uh, in foreign affairs that talks about a, a, a foreign a foreign policy problem uh, that the United States has with wars is that uh, most Black people have always opposed the wars that America is involved in. I, I want to use that as part of the damn, you go to trial as part of the evidence that this ain't nothing peculiar. I have a position on this whole Ukraine stuff. So, uh, but what I wanted to raise is uh, uh, this is a really important presentation that we just had, uh, because uh, I'm inclined to be ducking jury, uh, uh, you know, I've been a jury and 
And I think that we have to, it's absolutely right, we occupy all the spaces. Right. And uh, we want to be on those juries. And, you know, <laughs> what do you mean the knife was still in the back and his hand was on it and uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera? It's still innocent, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, we have to really be there. There are, there are actually white organizations that train white people how to be on the jury. Right. I mean, it really teach them. They want to be on the jury to keep us in prison. That's a literal truth. I've seen that, read about it, how people do that. So what we're talking about now is how to get on the damn jury. And that means we also have to solve that problem of being on the back of the bus, too. You know, that needs to become some kind of political issue uh, that, that they have to deal with. And all these Black people said, we can't get on the jury. That needs to be a political question, not just some legal question. You know, uh, so I, I think that's important. So I appreciate the presentation, comment. And, and, um, and uh, in terms of the response to comment, uh, Dr. Chair, in terms of uh, uh, where that jury pool is going to come from, I just know that some months ago, when uh, Tucker Carlson first came out, uh, about this case and, and opposed to what happened to the attack on us and uh, and how that was an attack on free speech, et cetera. Uh, one of our lawyers made a statement that he was glad to see that because jury pool is going to come from those places who look at Tucker Carlson and support Trump and, and what have you. And uh, so I just wanted to make that point here. Yeah. So I don't know what they're going to look like either. You know, but I think that's important. I think also the response I got on top of Carson, that's been seen by more than three or four million people right now. That's been seen by more than three or four million people. I think the response I got on there is indicative of something as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, 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 made, you prompted me to say something that I, as I should have said in the presentation. What jury selection is really jury elimination. Yeah. We're not looking to pick yeah. people. We're looking who to kick off the yeah. jury. Yeah. So that's why I say what I say yeah. when I say say or don't say in yeah. order to say. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Because we, we're not looking to pick. It's really not jury selection. It's really jury elimination. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like a you know, guerrilla warfare yeah. for us. Yeah. You know, we, we have to move a certain kind of way in order to make sure that we stay. But the point you're making is that they got the same principle with jury selection that they have. What do they call it? Uh, voter suppression. Well, well, you know, uh, suppress the, that participation by African people because that's what we mean in terms of the overall social system. Our being in there is definitely something that is disfavorable, uh, you know, toward the you know, stability of the whole colonial project. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, and yes, it's yes. important too because uh, because most trials, most court, most defendants don't go to trial. Right. Mm -hmm. They flee out. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I just think that we need to, you know, if, if everybody refuse to plea, but they terrorize people. They do. If you don't, if you don't plea out, you know, you're out. gonna get all of these years, they're gonna et cetera, et cetera. But if they had to, if they had to take everybody to trial yeah. who they indict or who they lock up, the whole system would collapse. Yeah. You know, uh, they can't handle it like that. And that's why they got filed. They, their lawyers ain't no good. That's why life now from these lawyers can handle it because we, we've been fighting whether we're in court or not. Uhuru. 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 Um, Brother Life, thank you so much. Um, I just want to read one other comment. I know you have to go and we have to move on uh, further, but somebody just brought up in the chat how many Black people, especially, I guess, if they're not going to be uh, paid if they don't show up to work, he was just saying that, um, you know, a lot of times that presents a problem, too, because they have to risk losing a whole day's worth of work and maybe, you know, get $5 for whatever the jury pays. And certainly, I agree with your point we have to be on the jury but this is just you know reminding us in terms of all the things that we face with this system and how they try to come at us but thank you so very much for that presentation and you've given us a lot can we have one more comment here in the room please okay sure just you can't get keep me on point uh, i think that uh we have to uh give support to the chairman and the, and the three and we have to educate the people and put the government on trial. And our task is to educate 
the mask of the people and show all the different crimes and criminal behavior of the government yeah. and show that the government yeah. is a criminal and add everything we did to them and show who they really are. Yeah. And when Ralph Brown was in jail in New Orleans, I went there to organize and educate the people in New Orleans and put the government on trial, the federal government on trial. And what we were doing and I was organizing down there and we were, you know, educating. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and when Ralph was in court, uh, when we went for lunch, <laughs> and on the way back from lunch, about a hundred police came between the car I was in and rap and let rap go through because they had them on trial. <laughs> and they put me and three other people in jail, <laughs> and we were charged with possession in prison and prison. Mm -hmm. And we were charged with possession of a stolen pillowcase. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, uh, <laughs> In New Orleans, <laughs> the most important thing is to uh, appeal on the offense and put the they gun they on the trial, trial. And they put them on trial, but say 50 yeah. years anyway. Yeah. So and just show who they are, yeah. what they are, and most lawyers like you, when they go in the courtroom, they uh, educate the jury yes, yeah. and turn the jury against the government. Yeah. Well, and this is what we have to do. Yeah. Well, who wrote? Um, Sister Kenge, please help keep me on track. You have to stop this from being pillowcase. We have a, a question coming in from Sister Belinda Parker. Oh, Sister Belinda Parker. Go ahead, please. Right. And she asks um, well, how can people challenge uh, the court when they're not tried before a jury of their peers? It's, that, that's the whole point I attempted to make earlier about this idea of random. You know, uh, the, the, I think the chairman said it best. What we have to do is uh, make a political struggle to not be in the back of the bus. Because generally, like, you know, like if you've ever been in the, the, the veneer, the, the jury pool, it's, it's pretty much set up like this room. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we just eliminate with preemptory challenges and cause challenges just by number. And if you are sitting where Alice sitting, uh, we're not going to get to you. Most times we're not going to get there. And the point is we have to figure out how to get to the front of the bus. And that's that's one way uh, that we can, we can do it. I think the chairman was right. We have to make that political challenge to make sure that we're no longer in the back of the bus. Short of that, I don't have, I mean, I don't have a better answer. Well, I think that part of it is in what Mikasa is talking about, because that's been our strategy all along. Yes, that's sir. why I'm saying that the trial has already begun, mm -hmm. and it's them who are being put on trial by us. And I think being able to have organizers uh, out there who are making that position to the people, and part of the thing that we have to take to the people is the fact that they don't want Black people on the jurors, and make it a political question, make it a political question so that the, the court is aware that these people out there saying they're keeping black people off, you know, make, that's what, uh, what's his name did uh, when they tried uh, the, the, the uh, Hewitt and uh, who was Hewitt's boy, Charles uh, Gary. Gary. What he did, he made a fierce, every juror who came up, every white person, you don't like black people, do you? And you're going to find him guilty just because he's black, right? And he was doing this to every person that came up there. People saying, you're going to, you're going to turn the jury against him. What he did, these are white people he talking to, but he did put them in a situation that they had to prove while they were they there that they did, they were not racist. That's you understand? Right. And so right. that's part of how they won the case. We have to be quite conscious of that. What we've been able to do up to now, we haven't seen in the 1960s there were such things as, as political lawyers, movement lawyers. Come on. That's something that sort of disappeared, and we're seeing a reemergence in this. In this case now, mm -hmm. our, we've seen an interesting transformation of the lawyers who are handling this case. I mean, life comes in as a member of the party, uh, but we've seen an interesting transformation and we begin to see for the first time uh, movement lawyers coming out of this process. And that's been impressive as well. You know, when I made the announcement about being in Tampa, do you want the masses to be there in support we want everybody there. We want everybody. Bring your cats too. You know, uh, 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 ask the people who are there uh, because this is their problem. The point is, they come to our house at five o'clock in the morning. Yes, sir. You understand? They attack our institution. 
we and 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 they come with guns and and terror. We bring the people there, and as many and what was the question that comment Sister Belinda Parker raised around raised uh, about how do we what. She was talking about how do we ensure that we have a jury of our peers because many of us don't. That was something I wanted to address too because in the 1960s that became a question that was taken into people were filing suits in the courtroom. The radicals and revolutionaries were uh, were that this is not a jury of my peers. You know, you know, uh, you know these white people from where I don't know where, et cetera, and they 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 were losing those in the courtroom because the court made some kind of arguments that. And perhaps it went to, I don't know if it went to the Supreme Court, I suspect it did. They were raising arguments that somehow by being Americans and being this and that, they were peers. I mean, they liquidated the contradiction that exists between African people, white people, rich people, poor. They liquidated all of those that that in order to say that they are jury of peers. So this is something that that actually movement struggles, particularly in the 1960s, were fighting this and saying, these are not my peers. And I think. I think you'll find a lot of that in some pamphlet cases. I think that's where I saw a lot of that center that in, in pamphlet cases. Mm -hmm. So, but I think it's stuff that we take to the people because the thing is that if we convince the people, and in terms of getting on the jury, our, our, we when we go and, 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 and engage in war as you were mentioning, the objective is not to convince the prosecutor that we're mad or that we bad. Uh, and that this is what needs to happen. Uh, the, what we do is convince the prosecutor, uh, uh, the state that we should be on that on that on that on that jury. And then when we get on the jury, that's yeah. where we go to work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is uh, uh, yes, what your plan should be. So that's though this is a complex thing, but it's not. And uh, it's guerrilla warfare, as someone has just suggested. We we, we, we adapt the to the circumstance, conditions that we're located in, and we win. And we, as long as we can keep in mind what our what our ultimate aim is, to what end, you know, why am I here? You understand? And uh, anyway, we'll go on. And I did not, in the beginning, salute my vice chair, uh, uh, Comrade Lisa Davis, and uh, I did say the steering committee, but I did want to give a special shout out to that comrade who does such tremendous work. Yeah. And you know, we have these know your rights cards. So to your point, we have these know your rights cards and stuff. You may need to have a know what to say to state. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, for, for this jury out here. Yeah. People do have this subjective approach to the thing and talk themselves right off the damn panel. 